Hello guys, today we are going to cast a replay on a beautiful map for Horizon in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.2 in the El Clasico matchup between good and evil Gondor against Isengard. And uh, you know, look at this player, it's Shanks. <laughs> it's me, but I was not able to record this while I was playing it, but I think it's a very phenomenal game, a very you know great performance from both the players. I was actually facing against Farad, who was also trying something else, and you know, unpredictable stuff makes me suffer quite a lot at the beginning of the game. So Isengard was opening with three furnaces and sending the Uruk forward to actually, you know, capture all settlements offensively. In the meantime, I was sending my soldiers forward with the Hobbit and building a barracks after the blacksmith. So this way I could have a little bit more pressure early game, you know, a bit more momentum and play a bit more aggressively. But this was, you know, quite surprising for me. So what happens here is Farad is using the war chant on his Uruks, and uh, not yet, but I was using the Elvin Wood, so I can stay on this land, and my soldiers would be a little bit stronger than his Urukai. And also, I would recruit one more soldier, and capture those two farms offensively. I think that's very important, I will recruit even one more soldier afterwards, and let me tell you, this is not a regular start, you know, from both the players, so I was going for some more infantry beast early game, and Isengard going for like a tricky and offensively build order, like three furnaces, you know, a lot of eco, double fur double tower to protect these three furnaces, and then the Uruk pit right after. And he has also the settlement untouched. But I think I should be coming ahead in this situation, because I will have in total three farms outside, and Isengard has only one mil, but again, in exchange for that, he has three furnaces, which means lots of money for the Isengard player Farad. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I will try obviously my best to recapture the you know map control and I was also sending the two soldiers back I was sending forward at the beginning of the game. So look at the situation. How many times dude? It feels like I'm playing a hard army, you know <laughs> I have like four soldiers in one location But the good thing is with this many soldiers we have also the chance later on to creep quite a lot But this is only the beginning of the fiesta. This game is actually gonna be a phenomenal game and hopefully you guys will enjoy if you do Please don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Okay, in the meantime, I'm a FL level 2 soldier, which is pretty good. A level 2 battalion of swordmen early game are actually essentially impactful in this game because each level makes them hit harder like a truck, you know? They are becoming almost like Superman. You know, they are extremely powerful. And I was also able to sneak in one more soldier. So I was actually recruiting three soldiers from the barracks. Again, it's like, um, you know, you need to kind of um, sacrifice your early game a little bit. I mean, your mid game, because you're stable, this way will be a bit more delayed. But imagine if I wouldn't have done it. Imagine if I wouldn't go for the barracks, I would not be able to recapture my settlements anytime soon. And Isengard should actually come ahead in the situation. I was also able to hide my Hobbit here, so Isengard player can not recapture this. But look his speeds. You know, three furnace opening, look his speeds. Even though he has like only one, or he had only one mil, but I was still able, I mean, he was still able to fill up the bees. Build the Uruk pit, get it to level 2. Because of my barracks, my stable is a bit delete. And building the war pit at the same time, just to counter my soldiers. So, Isengard's economy, holy guacamole, seems to shine bright like a diamond. In the meantime, I was able to creep this one, and now I'm creeping this one. That's actually very important for me, because as Gondor against Isengard, what you want to do is you want to creep as much as you potentially can to get the power points collected to unlock the Ranger Ally Special Summon, which we will need, need later on to deal with the Pikeman when we're gonna, when we're gonna go for a base rush. In the meantime, Isengard actually has like Pikeman already offensively. I'm trying to creep, I know, because Pikeman are gonna be there, so I'm, I will I will try my best to creep as much as I potentially can with my Gondor Knights and Gondor Soldiers. But unfortunately, very soon, he will have some Vork Riders up on the field to trample down my soldiers and they don't stand a chance. Okay, in the meantime, my base is not looking very good, actually, because I need to buy upgrades very soon, right? I need blades, I need heavy armor, I need also the shields from a stable level 2, um, which will give me more durability against arrows when it comes to rush the bees, and you need to tank all these sentry towers for minutes and minutes on end, that's why you will need definitely the night shield, 
uh, which can also stack with the heavy armor. So you can actually make your Gondonites and Rohirrim quite beefy, quite tanky, and they can absorb yeah. lots of damage. And look at this, the Vorks were able to clean my soldiers, no problemo. They will also be able to, you know, destroy this farm. And very soon, I will slowly but surely, you know, start losing map control. Because he has like a perfect counter, right? Uh, he was also demolishing the Vorkpit, by the way, after the second Vork Rider. I don't think it's a good idea. I think you need to get at least three battalions, I mean, at least for me. Um, because... When you lose two of them, then you have no one left anymore. And even if you lose only one of them, then you have only one battalion, and the one battalion can't be everywhere at the same time. So, but he's doing a good job. Look at the minimap. You know, it was very unexpected from my side. And when you are not expecting something, you are also not prepared for that, you know? That's exactly the definition of creating a new meta, which is the main purpose of the patch 2.22. Making units, which are normally weak, a bit stronger. There comes the first ranger summon from me. I will try to kill as many pikemen as I potentially can. I have also the shields and the forge blades captured. The thing, look at this situation right now. I'm in his base, right? He will be definitely able to get more and more pikemen upon the field. But look at the minimap as I'm doing this. The map is turning completely into blue color. And Isengard was even able to, co you know, cover my elven wood with his tainted land. Which means he can, he needs to sacrifice his, you know, industry. His eco will be a bit worse. But I think it's a very good choice. And very unfortunate, but I lost one of my Gondor Knights. The second one is, you know, deciding to run into the enemy units too. And I might lose them, but I think it's gonna be safe for now. And that's, you know, very unfortunate. When you play Gondor and you, against Isengard and you lose one of your Gondor Knights, especially when you have upgrades on them, you know, Knight, knight Shields and also um, Forge Blades and also some levels, it is quite painful. And now we have a tricky situation because I can not simply recruit soldiers in hope that they will be enough to counter the enemy pikemen because I know now, okay, my Isengard opponent has actually war riders up on the field. And they are countering on in exchange my soldiers. They will one shot them with the trample. So I need to fig figure out what I'm supposed to do. I think the best goal here would be to combine your tower guards with the soldiers. It's also a future which was added to the patch 2.22, but Look how interactive the gameplay is. It's adaptive, you know? It's not like... I remember I played this matchup like thousand times in the patch 1.06 and it was always the same build order for Isengard but also for Gondor. And now it's different. And I like this, you know? Like, people are getting out of the comfort zone and they need to rethink now their strategies and trying to adapt to the playstyle of their opponents. And that's why I really have respect to Farad who was trying something extremely new and it was definitely working out, you know? It was holding me in check position, like, throughout the early mid-game. Look at this minimap. Like, there is little to nothing I can do about this situation. That's why I need to now invest so much money and uh, recruit the Tower Guard for 360 and the Soldier for 108. If you are wondering why they are so cheap, it's because you have the Well, which will give you additional bonus, uh, reduced cost of infantry. So when you have one Well, you get 10%, two Wells, 20%, three Wells, 30%. Okay, now I have the soldier in tower guard combination and they're pretty beefy but again when it comes to fight infantry against infantry nothing beats Isengard infantry and the counter to that is actually when you combine your Uruks with pikemen so that's a future for Isengard and Gondor at the same time they can both do this and the good thing about this is it's a much much more cost efficient combo right because you need to buy forge blades and heavy armor only once but your soldiers and tower guards as you combine them will have both the upgrades. Like, look at the situation. And the good thing about them also on top of that is they are also kind of good against cavalry. And I'm going for another beast rush. But he has too many units on the field. He's going to use the Warchan defensively. So I need to, you know, try to slow down the game a little bit for Isengard because he's growing way too fast, way too rich. And I need to buy time. I need to buy time to recruit my heroes. I need to buy time to buy upgrades on my units. And I need to buy down, you know? And I need to kinda kinda keep him busy and prevent him from sieging my castle anytime soon. That's my plan here. I know my rushes are not gonna be as impactful as I want them to be. But that's not the goal. The goal is to slow down the Isengard, you know, progressing. 
because Isengard can progress extremely fast. Like with this much map control, trust me on that one, guys. He has all the upgrades purchased from the from the armory. He's in a phenomenal spot. And the thing about Isengard against Gondor is when you play Isengard, you actually don't even need fire arrows against Gondor anytime soon. So you can actually spam infantry, swordmen, pikemen only, and you should be just too good, good to go. He's gonna use Tainted Land here, but I will be able to cover this no problemo. Uh, my units should be a little bit stronger now on this land, and that's why he's deciding to retreat. And we have also Lourdes for Isengard, he's only level 1, but he will eventually, you know, get some more levels the, go long the longer the game goes on. I'm trying to make something happen here, I'm trying to collect power points, I have 3 power points in the bank, I have nearly 3000 collected, and my idea is, okay, I think, you know, I figure out, okay, whatever I do now, I can't reclaim map control, not with infantry, and definitely not with cavalry, so, that is the one magical solution to all your problems, when you're <clears throat> struggling, you need to recruit Gandalf the White. Okay, he was also using the Palantir, um, and we need to be careful about the situation. I mean, I have a level 5 soldier, I mean, Gondor and Petarin, I don't want to lose him. And we have 4,000 in the bank, and, you know, again, I'm just, you know, running around the map, you know, trying to be annoying, and pretend him to buy the outpost and siege me. Because I know if he goes for the siege, now, I have little to no answer to this. So if he comes to my base with Rams or Ballista, I can't handle this situation as we are talking. That's not possible for me. I need time. I need money. I need 6,000 to get my Gandalf up on the field. I mean, as you can see, like, we are struggling. Uh, running away is not an option because Isengard infantry is just much faster. The evil hordes are moving quicker because this is no Rebel of Mindless Orcs. These are Urukai. Soldier Battalion at the ready. I mean, I'm trying to get a bit map control but as we are talking i have only one single farm outside you know imagine my eco like i have like barely enough money to get gandalf on the field even though i'm saving now for gandalf for the last couple of minutes but now i will have the money i'm cash voting also to be honest i was quite rusty in this game but this kind of mistakes from both the sides actually turned to make this game to a great one and this game is far from being over guys i don't want to spoil too much because you will get the chance to see yourself so i'm trampling you can trample this combo, by the way. It's gonna slow you down, you will take some damage, but it's not as bad as trampling into a porcupine formation pikeman. And that's one of the weaknesses of this combo battalion, because when you combine units with each other, you can't use their battle formation anymore. So you can't put the, you know, Uruks into the shield pull formation, you can't put the pikeman into the porcupine formation, that's not possible, obviously. They have no formation ability whatsoever. It means they will have not the additional armor bonus or damage bonus against cavalry, and you can still knock them down on the ground. So many pikemen, so much death, what can men do against such a reckless seat? But there comes Gandalf, boys. And now, that's the time I need to try to go for the beast and draw his attention. Because I know, I have zero vision. Look, this is my vision control. I have zero vision around the bottom side. So I'm assuming that he has something cooking. I'm assuming he is gonna siege me very soon. And in order to deny that from happening i need to buy time with gandalf i need to make something happen i need to draw the attention and force him to go to his castle and play defensively you know pressure kind of creates defensive situation for the opening player so i need to play aggressively i need to get power points collected my goal is here to get eagle special summon like that's the breaking point because in the worst case scenario what i can do is i can summon the eagles and, you know, send them straight to Lourdes. And order them to kill Lourdes. The second Lourdes dies, the anti-hero, the hero who has the chance to set my Gandalf in stone so he can't move with the cripple ability, then I can go and make some shenanigans, you know, with Gandalf. And try to pull off some magical tricks to turn the tide. We've improved the smithy. I stand as the captain of Gondor. Okay, we have Gondor, captain of Gondor on the field. Um, five power points collected. We need only one more power point at this point to get the Eagle Special Summon unlocked, which is uh, essential. Because I'm hoping that he has no fire. And actually, I am, my prediction is kind of true. Because look at the army from Isengard. He's gonna siege me very soon, yes? But he has no combos. He has no crossbow, man. He has nothing that can damage my Eagles anytime soon. And that's gonna hopefully uh, give me the chance to defend myself. I'm trying to deny and 
you know, buy some time by destroying one of the ramps. I need to build some towers just to keep Isengard away a little bit and also get more power points collected. And there comes the Eagle Special Summon. So my goal is simple. I want to kill Lords, but then I realize, okay, he has no combos. I don't need to send here. Boom, use our blast in the meantime. Gandalf is hitting level 7, you know, shining bright like a diamond. Look, his staff is glowing. And now I know I don't need to stop. I can keep going and keep doing stuff with them, uh, with the eagles. And keep crushing him, you know. I have a couple of minutes left. He's going in, inside the beast, but I'm, you know, I'm being careful with Gandalf. You can't, you shouldn't, you know, lose Gandalf in any matchup. Because he has like an incredible long revive time. And you losing him gives such a big momentum to your opponent. You will have the chance to commit and you have not your biggest and mightiest weapon to defend. And as you could eventually see, Isengard and also Mordor faction, they are able to get power points when they lose units. So he was able to get 3 power points collected, but I was able to collect 4 power points with the Eagle Summon and Gandalf's power points. And now I know, okay, here's the outpost at the bottom left side, and my goal is here to destroy this outpost, to deny or delay the next base rush, okay? The next siege. And he was not able to break my gate nor my wall, and I should be in a kind of good spot. And this game means a lot of dedication and focus. You should never lose your focus. You should never, ever, you know... Forget about the map control and look at the mini map in the meantime. As I was defending myself, as I was using the Eagles, I was actually able to reclaim map control with my infantry units, with my tower guard soldier combination. I'm a big fan of them actually. I'm happy that we added them to the patch 2.2 because look at this combination, boys. They look great, am I right or not? Okay, now I am able to push back from the bottom side. He crippled my Boromir, which is a mistake, obviously. I will heal him because that's not the film. I will not let Boromir die. And then I can just, you know, take down Lourdes. No problem, he's gonna use the Freezing Rain, which is a mistake from him. Uh, hear me out, you don't need Freezing Rain against Gondor. What you can afford much easier and much, much better is the Field of Fires. And look how impactful the Horn of Gondor from Boromir is. Because he has Lourdes only level uh, 2, and he has not recruited Saruman at all. Because his eco is not that good, since he went for the Freezing Rain, which is once again a mistake, if you go for the Fuel the Fires instead, with this many Lamermans outside, you will grow rich and you can have both. Lords, you know, Saruman, Fear Resistant, combos with Fire Rose. You can have anything or everything you really want, you know? You have also the brothers now, the captains of Gondor side by side, Boromir, level 5, the Horn of Gondor, essential in those kind of situations. As Isengard army has no Fear Resistant, I can keep you know, blowing my Horn of Gondor and stunning them Kill over and over again. Get to work. The Urukai will not be stopped. Okay, Lourdes is back in the business, almost level 3. Uh, will unlock the Carnage, but he's still far away from the level 5, which will not only give him the chance of fear in invulnerable to the nearby allied units, but also 60% additional damage leadership, which is definitely important when it comes to burst down the heroes like Gandalf, Boromir, Faramir down a bit faster. And, you know, in order to deny this, we need to always hard focus Lourdes. And we need to kind of try to dodge the incoming pin ability from Lourdes, the cripple, to pin my hero down. So I'm going to summon now the Rangers for the third time. Again, my goal is here to fish power point. It's, you know, the game is designed like that. You fight to get power points collected. Because the more power points you have in the mid to lead game, the more impactful and stronger you will get. And obviously, the next breaking point is the army of the dead. We have 8 power points in the bank, and we need 2 more power points, and in the meantime, I'm able to reclaim map control. Gandalf makes it possible. He's extremely mobile, right? He's like a wizard on, on horse, and he has the chance to disengage, engage, you know, commit, run away. There's a lot of options. In the meantime, I also was building up the marketplace just to get a bit more money, because, you know, hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. In the meantime, Outpost captured, Archer range almost level 2, Isengard is committing, but look at this. Boom, and he can't move. Like Boromir, I'm telling you, he was the most useless hero in the game in the patch 1.06, and now he's all of a sudden very impactful and definitely worth to go for. Boom, sun on your face. My Gandalf is hitting like a truck in almost level 9. He crippled me, but he has not many units remaining on the field. Boromir got killed, just like in the films, but I will take the revenge of Gandalf with the Easter Delight. Somebody help me! <laughs> I have heal. <laughs> you, you thought you got me. 
I've also the shield bubble, the magical shield for the worst case scenario, and I do even have the EOD if I want to, if I need to. But I'm gonna just not use it for now. My plan is simple at this point, because I am planning to win the, up, win the game with the next EOD special summon, right? That's my plan. So what I want to do is I want to heal up a little bit with Gandalf and my horses, get some rangers recruited, get map control, and go for the push. As I go for the push, as I go inside the base, I want to use the War of Power, uh, you know, the EOD summons, sorry, um, to tank all the damage from the arrows, kill his remaining army, and then use my own army to finish him off right after. That's my plan, and um, that's what I'm aiming for. Look in the meantime. Again, map control is essential. As I'm doing this, you need to do something else at the same time. Macro is even more important in, you know, RTS games than micro is. So you gotta do multiple things at the same time. If you wanna succeed, if you wanna become a better player, you know, train your macro first. Okay, here's Lourdes on the field once again. We have the Eagle Special Summon available with almost two power points. And I, at this point of the game, I don't know how close he actually is for the Balrog. But in re I mean, I was actually expecting him to be way closer. So I had like in my mind, okay, when he summons Balrog on my base, in the worst case scenario, what I can do is I can use my EOD to kill the Balrog, right? That's in my opinion, in my, in my head going on like this. Because to be honest, I was expecting him to be way closer to the Balrog Special Summon than he actually is. And also kind of kind of a shame that he never had the chance or the money to recruit the White Wizard. Because remember in the last two fights, the hero who was messing him up even more than Gandalf did was actually Boromir's Horn of Gondor. Regardless how strong your units are, if they are feared, if they are crowd controlled, if they can't move or attack, they are useless. It's like 10 seconds in RTS time. It's a long time. And look, my Boromir is going for the third time now. Look, in the, in the meantime, he's trying to reclaim map control with the Warg Riders and Pikemen, but he goes for the Horn of Gondor and Gandalf. Do it, Gandalf. Boom, sun on your face. And almost level 10. So, on top of the EOD we already have, we have even now a Gandalf who's gonna be level 10. I'm gonna use the Easter Ride on, on Lourdes. Boom, and Gandalf is level 10. So, now we have two army destructive powers in the Gondor faction, and I don't even need to use heal, right? Do I have heal? I have heal for the worst. I mean, I wouldn't... There we go. You shall not pass. I wouldn't risk Gandalf. And he's gonna call it at this point. It was over because the next push with the EOD was already enough to finish off the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I, I'm kind of sad that I didn't uh, do this as I was playing. It, the game was quite intense though, you know. And uh, I was quite rusty. I didn't play 1v1s now for a while. And Farad improved quite a lot. I think he's going to be a very worthy opponent for the upcoming games. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.